There's a new drug. I'm really worried about it. We're beginning to hear a lot about it. It's turned up in over 25 states. It is called bath salts. You heard me right, bath salts. And it's not the balls or the things you pour into your bath. It is a drug. It's banned in some states, yet still legal in others. New Jersey just took action to outlaw them. Now, before we go any further, I need you to watch this tape about bath salts. These bath salts aren't what you pour into the tub. They're designer drugs, stimulants made for snorting or smoking. They produce a high similar to that of crack or meth, euphoria and sexual arousal. They can generate hallucinations, paranoia, and psychotic episodes. And consider this, bath salts are sold in a convenience store, gas station, and online. In other words, they are readily available. All right, here's what I want you to know about these, the bath salts, the chemical in here. It's related to MDMA, which is ecstasy, except basically it's like, meth it's like methamphetamine on crack. It's methamphetamine that quickly pushes people into the methamphetamine psychosis, yet in spite of all these unpleasant side effects, the power of the drug to repeat the behavior of doing it again is so profound that in spite of it being unpleasant, they're driven to do it again and get further into these horrible side effects. Here's a bath salt user. His name is Corey. He's a father and a husband. And his mom, Diane, they wrote to us seeking help for Corey. Chemical dependency counselor Shelly Sprague from Celebrity Rehab also joins me. Okay, mom, I want to start with you. How do you see Corey behave on these chemicals that we call bath salts? Um, he's just paranoid. Just paranoid. Just uh, constantly looking over his shoulder. Um, thinks people are against him all the time, where people are talking about him. Uh, he's told me that when he's at work, he thinks people will be talking behind his back. Um, mostly, you'll get more from my daughter-in-law when you speak with her. He's just, con he's just not Corey. He's just not Corey. He, um, scares me because he gets violent, he yells, uh, you know, I, I have my grandbabies around there. You know, he'll put a knife or down in the couch or wherever he may be resting at the time. And, you know, God forbid one of his children, you know, uh, get up in the middle of the night and stick their hand down in the couch. Uh, I'm very concerned, you know, because it starts. Yes. Yes. Corey, th uh, thank you, Mom, for that, that description. You're it's welcome. It's chilling enough. Corey, thank you for joining us and having the courage to step up and talk about this. Uh, how did you find out about these things? The bath there's, salts. There's seldom tobacco shops, and you know I'm a cigarette smoker, so when I go in, just you know I look around the shops and show them, hey, you know, what's this? Figured I'd try it out, and that's how I, I came upon you, it. How long have you been using it? You get... uh, probably since Christmas of last year. And it sounds like the high is, at least the side effects, are rather unpleasant. Why do you keep going? Because at first, when you first do it, it's nothing afterwards. It's the high. Yeah, it's like taking your the first high that you're always chasing to look for it again. But it's not until... See, it's funny because it's not until I get home is when the side effects kick in. It's are you aware paranoia. that this? That, are you aware that you're having paranoia from the the salts when you're when you're in that paranoid state, or does it just seem like everyone's out to get you and that's that? Oh no, I know it's it's from this. I I definitely know it's from this. But when I don't use it for a while, and I'm still hearing stuff, you know that that kind of bothers me. That when I mention something about it, they're just saying, oh well, you're on it again, or you know it's. It's the side effects, you know, and I, I've done my research on it, and yes, some could be permanent, some could not be, but for going a while without using it and I'm still hearing stuff, I just, I, I question myself whether, you know, either if I'm going crazy or if just nobody wants when to you believe say it. You're, when you say you're hearing stuff, you mean your complaints about your family, uh, from your family about your paranoid behavior? No, like, I would, I could hear people walking outside of my house, I could hear people shouting, you know, I always think, you know, and bringing my wife into it, I always think she's going into the opposite end of the house talking to somebody. 
because she would never okay, so ever you're, do that you're, in her you're, own. You're, you're having auditory hallucinations, we call it, when you're actually hearing voices and they may be persecutory, the Corey, you're doing something bad. Shelley, to, when you hear him talk about this, this is typical of what we see from methamphetamine, but you have to use methamphetamine for a long while before you get those kinds of toxic side effects. Yeah, absolutely, and and just you know, and that it's not that it's not remitting after he's you know stopped for a period. I don't know how long he had stopped, but for a period of days and weeks, if that those symptoms aren't subsiding, you know, I don't know exactly what's going on there. But but the amphetamine does the same thing. Methamphetamine psychosis, which is what mm -hmm. he's describing here, is a exactly. stimulant psychosis, yeah, exactly. which is paranoid delusions, preoccupations about family, friends, coworkers, hearing right. voices, even right. seeing things, seeing things. Uh, and but you know it's. It's also stimulant to the drug of violence. Then people will become violent uh, in response to these paranoid delusions. Correct. What, what I found interesting, what he said, he sounded like he was describing crack when he said that desire to do it again to chase the high. That's how mm -hmm. crack users exactly. describe crack. Exactly. So it is exactly. methamphetamine so, on crack. So it, I mean, essentially, from what we're seeing and all of the symptomology that we're seeing from the reports is that it is amphetamine. It is the drug that we've been warning people against for years and years and years and it is now in the corner store it is around the corner it is in uh, I'm sure in schools and there's no regulation and no one knows what to do about it at this particular point but exceedingly dangerous clearly mom I want to ask you uh, before we take a break here what other drugs has Corey been doing uh, well um, it started off where he would smoke, you know, he smoked pot. Um, he would take my, I'm on medication, I take Xanax, and that would disappear. Uh, Percocet, Darvocet, whatever, you know, was around that was available, I guess, you know, to him at the time. You know, these, you know... I know he's not the only one. I mean, there are other friends out there that get them. You know, the kids do it. They just do it. But my fear is that now that this has gotten to the point where he's gotten these feelings of paranoia, uh, hearing voices, uh, thinking there's somebody in the next room or here, there, or whatever, it worries me because it does say that it can do permanent damage. You know, he has two young well, children, you, you know. I, I it totally scares understand. Me. I, I, I will tell you generally the stimulant psychoses do remit, but they can be with them for quite a little while after they use. And every time they use, the clock resets. 